If you're building Power BI reports for HR, then you really need to know how to set up this visual over here, an organizational diagram, which shows the different employees at different levels of an organization and how they relate to one another. And even if you don't work in HR, but you are working with hierarchical data, this is a super interesting visual. So let's dive in and let's see how to set this up. An organizational diagram is a super common way to visualize the employee structure of a company where we can go from the CEO to the next level of senior managers and then open up to the level below that where we have the managers and then the analysts, etc. Now, in Power BI, we don't really have many visuals that show it in a way that a lot of people are familiar with. Well, we have a table, but well, that is not the same. We have a matrix visual, which goes in the right direction. However, what we are going to build looks like this. And that is actually a decomposition tree, a native visual in Power BI, but used in a little bit of a different way. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we need our data in the right structure. Now, and if we are talking about hierarchies, well, then quickly we get to the path function. Now, let me show you. Here I have a standard employee table and you see we have the employee names and we have a column with the manager ID. So that is the ID number of the manager that they have to report to. So here we have Mike Thompson, which reports to John Smith and John Smith reports to nobody because he's the CEO, All right? So if we go a little bit further down, for example, over here, Emily Carter, he or she reports to manager ID two, which is Mike Thompson, all right? So we know who is reporting to who. However, for the visual that we want to create, we need to have level one column, level two column, level three column, all right? So let me show you what I mean. Let's go over here and add a new column. So column tools, new column, and I'm going to call this column path example. All right, so I'm going to use a function that's called path, all right? So it returns a string which contains a delimited list of IDs, starting with the top root of a hierarchy and ending with the specified ID. Sounds complex, but it will make sense in a second. All right, so over here, we need an ID column and a parent column. Now the ID column, that's the employee ID over here, and then we have the parent column, right? That is then the manager ID. All right, and that's it. So let's press enter and have a look if that works. And you see that this function returns the path. At the top, we have the CEO, number one. And then if we go to the next line, there we have Mike Thompson who reports to the CEO. And then we have two more that report to the CEO, Tom and Emily. And then we go a level down. We have one, two, five. So that is Emily Carter who reports to number two, you see? Over here reports to number two, Mike Thompson, who then again reports to number one. All right, so this is the path, the path of managers. All right, this is nice. However, this is not really what I want. I want to have the name of the level two managers or level three managers. So to do that, we need to work with a path item function. So let's go back. And now I'm going to use a path item function. And here we can return the end item in the delimited list produced by the path function. Now the path function we just used, right? So that we already have, that gives us the path. And now we want to have which position? Well, over here, if I would go for one, we would always get the, well, the employee ID for the CEO, which is number one. So I'm going to go for the level two managers, the senior managers below the CEO. So Two, and then how does it need to get returned? Let's go for an integer. Okay, now let's press enter and let's see what it gives us. So now we have over here three different values, two, three, four, because we have three managers below the CEO in this data set. Okay, however, I don't want to have that number. I want to have the name. So one more function that we need, which is a lookup. Now we want to return the values from what column? From the name column. So let's see how that one is called here. We have here name and surname, perfect. Then we need a search column. Now we want to search in the employee ID column. All right, and then the search value, oh, that one, gets returned by the path item function. So now it is complete. We can close the lookup value function and ta -da, we have over here the level two managers. So this would be level two 
managers okay so that means if i go back and i want to have level three or level one the only thing that i would need to change is that number over here and you see john smith is the ceo then before we had to and level two now i make it level three and you see in this way we can create the columns for all of the different levels now i've already done that in a separate table so let me just go over there and here we have the entire reporting line of managers for each employee so meaning here at the top there we have the ceo john smith and level two three four is then blank and here on the second line employee id nine that is charlie martin so at level four at the level below him that one is then empty, but the managers above him are then visible. Fill out Emily and John. Okay, so we have this for all of the employees. And this we're going to use on our visual. So let's go here to the reporting view and build a simple table. So let's go for a simple table and let me make it a little bit bigger and put it here in the middle. Now I'm going to drag from my table the different levels. So we have level one, two, three, four. And now it looks just like in the data view. But what would be a little bit nicer if we turn this into a matrix, because then we can expand down, which is already a little bit more in the direction that I want to go. Because if you have a big organization, well, having a big scrollable table, it's not that nice, right? So this is already a little bit better. I just have to watch out that we have here level two now on columns, right? So I want to have it in the right order on rows. And now I can expand down to the next level either by clicking on the plus icons or over here you can see we have also the drill down buttons or the expand down buttons to go down perfect that works however there are also these weird blanks every time well that is because well we have also blanks in the data set right so how to get rid of them well actually it's pretty easy now to remove the blanks we can make use of visual level filters so let's open the filter pa panel and then here for level four we can open it up and then switch to advanced filtering because we do not want to have the rows where level four is empty so it's not empty apply the filter boom all right so that looks better good now we could make this matrix a little bit better for example by going here to layout and then for example say outline so that you have and then next to one another then you can go up and down now this is not bad depending on what you're visualizing if you are going to have a lot of columns with values then this could be the way to go but i want to have this traditional way of showing an organizational structure and that's where the decomposition tree comes in all right so i'm going to change this visual to a decomposition tree which is this one over here and there it is now it will first complain that it has no fields to analyze so we take one of these fields level one and put it on analyze and now we have the top of our organizational structure basically the ceo and now i want to see the senior managers below the ceo and we can go there by clicking on that plus icon and then say level two perfect all right now then we have emily tom and mike the three senior managers so we can just keep on going and then say ah i want to see level three and level four now you see the whole path from the ceo to the senior managers the managers and the analysts now of course i don't want to have count of level one over here there which gets picked up there from the name so i want to have the name of the ceo john right so let's see what this our full name is John Smith. And what about the number below it? Well, over here for Emma, there are five people reporting to Emma. And there are three people reporting to Charlie. Right? So and if you add those up, well, you get 11. However, you for Emily, you probably want to see three, right? Because we have three people directly reporting to Emily. Or you would want to see... 11 plus well the three in between the analyst and at the level below it which would then be 14 so therefore i probably would choose just to hide it so let's go here to formatting values and let's set the font color uh, to white so that's the same as the background okay so we have now only the names all right so what's next well what do we have there at the top we have level two level three level four hmm, we can lock these levels however it's not really what I want. So therefore, let's go over here to the formatting options and see 
Can we do something about them? Can we, for example, hide them? Well, we can hide them a little bit. So the subtitles we can get rid of. And here we have an X, but that, ah, that removes the level. So there's no turn off the top part. Uh, so it's not here in, in the formatting option. So what we can do then is, well, just overlap them with a different element, like a slicer, right? So we can just insert something like a new slicer. Let's go for this one over here, a button slicer, I should say. Then let's put it over here at the top. And I want to see the different departments. So let's add data. Let's look for department. There you go. And then we can make that a little bit bigger and format it. All right, so that's better. So now I can also filter out departments that I'm not interested in like this. Okay, nice. And it just looks as part of the whole organizational diagram. Okay, now the next thing that I want to address is how filled up the bars are, which is dependent on the count. So how many level four employees are underneath a certain person? And then that is scaled to, for example, the maximum, whatever you choose there in the formatting options. Now, I think this is a bit confusing. So therefore, I don't want that. I just go here back to analyze and change count to count distinct. And in this way, we have the same width for each bar for each employee. So now it's just a design feature instead of a really analytical feature. Okay, good. Now, what we can then also do is go here to formatting and then bars. We can increase the size a little bit and you see then it spaces out a bit more. Now, of course, always make sure uh, that the top part is nicely underneath the slices. Now that goes in the right direction. Another thing that I would add is maybe a little bit of color so that we make a distinction between who is full time, who is part time, etc. Now we can do that with conditional formatting. So let's take our visual, let's go to formatting options. And then over here we have conditional formatting and we can, well, conditionally format the data bars. So for that, we need, of course, then a measure. Now let's go over here to the data panel and let me take the measure that I've already set up. And here you see, I'm just checking the contract type. If it's half time, then this color, full time, this color, etc. Okay, now that's basically it. So if I then go back and use that measure on conditional formatting, and the way to do that is by switching to field value. And then over here, I call it CF something, CF measure. All right, and there you go. Now it looks like these are all full time employees except well, J is over there. Now, this color probably means that this person is working part time or doing internship or something like this. Well, we probably should add a legend. OK, good. Then what about these connecting lines? That looks also a bit weird. Well, that you can change if you go over here to the three connectors selected line and then we can choose a different color. Right. So we can, for example, just go for dark gray and that's it. Now, perfect. We are getting somewhere. Now, another thing that you probably want to change is the tooltip, because now if we have over one of the employees, you see well, level three or level two, depending where you're hovering over, and then John Smith one. Hmm. So we can work with custom tooltips. Now, let me give you an example. Here we have the custom tooltip that I've set up for our organizational diagram with a picture, the name, the key competencies, and email and phone number of the employee that we will be hovering over and then this will show. So let's go back to a visual, take it, formatting, and then properties, tooltips, report page, and then pick the tooltip that well, you set up. Okay, now let's see if that works. If I, for example, go to Christian Borger, you see we have a nice picture, the key competencies, email, phone number showing up. And for Emma, also works. Perfect. All right, and that's it. Our organizational diagram is done. So now I can collapse it, open it up, you see, perfect. Nice. Works exactly like it should. The only thing that's a little bit annoying if I hover here over the CEO, the tooltip doesn't show nicely. So it's not that custom tooltip from 
before. You see that I have a different level. So the only way to get over that is to overlay it with an empty text box or something. Well, not the prettiest, but that's how life is sometimes in Power BI if you're looking for workarounds. Okay, now let me know. Do you like this trick? Is this something that you're going to use? Put it in the comment section below. If you want to see more tips and tricks around how to build impossible visualizations, then check out these videos over here. If you really properly want to learn how to build solid Power BI reports from beginning to end, then check out my training program over there. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.